What you doing, Justin Levels? Justin Levels. Yeah, yeah. Clearwater Productions. Mm-hmm. A track on the tracks. tracks. Woo. Keys on the boards. Big up to my man O. o. Help me get this in together. together. It's Mo Q. Mo Q. You know what I'm saying? ATL. Connecticut. Connected. Bring you something different for the old level. You know what I mean? About to hit you with something official. And it's like this. Like this. Yo, 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 what could I do, what would I do, convince you, girl, that I'm into you, you got like three gigs, minus kids, still looking fresh with the flyest crib, I'm high as shit, when I'm in the mix, call me a sweet like Twitch shit, I might have to rewrite this, yeah, be- hello, give me one second, man, let's stop this music, what's popping, man? What up, kid? No, nah, man, cooler, cooler, cooler is waiting for you, man. This, 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 this Facebook shit was all raggedy, man. Cause my um, my main page is weird. My main I'm page got my blocked. Belt right now. What'd you say? What'd you say? Huh? No, I said. What did you say? I can hear you. No, nah, I said my, my main page got blocked, so I was I was having issues of um like sharing the Zoom. The computer was getting confused. Like from my laptop, I couldn't send you no 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 um no uh, no messages. So I had to like put it in my email, copy it, and then send it from my phone to your. My phone isn't blocking the messages, but my laptop is. So I, my Facebook got blocked, yo. You gotta go to a quietest place though, cause that 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 background gonna be a problem though. That music, that noise. Yo, can you hear me? Yo. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right, what you say? No, I'm saying you gotta be in a, a quiet place. It's not gonna work. You feel me? Say that again. I said you got to be in a, a an quieter place or it's not going to work. You need you need some type of headphones or, or some some earbuds. No, I can know. hear you. I can hear you good. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Where you at? Where you at? You out in Bridgeport, man? You uh, you thug doing the thug fizzle? Yeah, sir. I'm downtown. Uh-huh. At the, uh The downtown uh, oh, Sunday uh, music show. Oh, they're doing a music show? They, they actually... Folks is actually doing something creative out there, not destructive. That's what's up. First of all, fuck you. And Bridgeport is not this and is not destructive. No, 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 and no. And Hartford no. is horrible place no, to no, live. No, no, no. Go ahead, say, continue. This ain't this the podcast ain't for roasting. This ain't that's what it's about. What I'm saying is it's good news to hear that a, a music festival is going on instead of people just breaking shit. You feel me? Because that shit been happening worldwide, you know. So that that's that that actually feels good that something positive is going on, you know. Okay, well, I'm just letting you know. Don't fuck with Bridgeport. Okay, nah, go ahead. No, no, no. It ain't got nothing to do with Bridgeport. Yo, you know what? Connecticut is, like, one of the only states where, like, like nobody nobody rioted yet. You know what I'm saying? We've, we've actually been pretty pretty civil, pretty tame. Yeah, that's, that's what we do. We, we are civil people in Connecticut. Now, do, you think, do you think it's because we civil, or do you think it's because we soft? First of all, your head is mad shiny and you're scaring the brick. Yo, man, behind. you're not, yo, you're not. Look, this ain't, this is the podcast. This ain't, this ain't a phone call, man. This is the podcast, my nigga. And it's to promote you. Yeah, we could, we could roast or whatever, but that, that's not, that's not what this platform is for. That's not the main, like, I didn't, I didn't bring you on here just to make, just to make jokes about you. I, I put you on, you know what I mean? I have a real conversation. You did? No doubt. I will have a real conversation with you as long as you put a hat on and let the shininess of your forehead on. shine in my eyes. You, you always go, you always gonna complain about something. What's up with what's up with the background? How'd you do that? What, 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 you put a the mind the, your the, business. Talk to me about something else. No, I'm saying it's dope. I like it. I think that shit is dope, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Hey man, you're gonna you gonna be defiant and silly on this whole broadcast. That's, that's not how we do this, man. First of all, mind your business. That's not how we do. That's not how we do a podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's to promote you. We got comedian Jackson, comedian Jackson, like 
uh, one of the OG comedians of uh, Connecticut, man. He's been doing this over 15 years. You know, he's been all over the country, international, uh, perform with the likes. He saw Kevin Hart coming up. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. You never performed with Triso, did you? I think you never did, right? Triso Neal? Triso Neal, no, no, no. But, you know, uh, any, uh, any of the big names that you could think of, he's been there, done it. Um, Jackson is one of the first comedians to, um, you know, take me under his wing, put me on game. He's the first comic to get me paid in New York City. You know what I'm saying? And, and expose me uh, to, the, to, that, to that market or what have you. And I always had sound advice for up and coming comics that's, that's, that's serious about their thing and trying to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? So give it up for the man, Jackson, people. Give it up for the man, Jackson. <laughs> that's how we do this, brother. Okay, well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. This is a serious thing. This ain't like, this podcast, this ain't just some bullshit where I'm just talking shit. You know what I mean? We actually talking about things that's going on in the world. We promoting each other, you know, giving encouragement. Yeah, we wrote some stuff like that too, but it's not, you know how like when I fuck with your lives and shit, we just be joking around, but, and I'm not saying we can't do that here neither, but you know, it, it can't only be that. You're going to do that for an hour, two hours roasting. You know, like you got two hours in you. You got you got ten minutes in you. You about to get back? Yeah, to but I was, I was only hanging you for not even five minutes, and you and you cussed me out. So fuck you. Go ahead. <laughs> you didn't even give me a chance to introduce you to the people. This is a whole different market. They gonna be like, damn, this nigga on a, he on a flyer. They put his cash app up, and the first thing he do is trash the nigga. God damn. Let me introduce your name first. Yeah, you do. You you a little bit too happy, and you're scaring my fan base. Yo, go your ahead. Teeth, your teeth mad yellow right now. <laughs> You like you got on a butter, you got like you got on a, on butter fronts. <laughs> but um, what's going on, man? As far as um, I want to, I I got a serious question for you, man. Do you um, do you see um? Any end in sight to these uh these uh international protests, man? Ask the question again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning of the question. I said, I said, do you see any end in sight to all these uh protests that are going on near uh worldwide? It's a two-part question. Do you see an end and what's gonna cause it to end or or to calm down, like all these protests and shit worldwide? What do you think? Honestly, I feel like um mm. I feel like, you know, all right, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. You know how you see videos of police harassing a black man, right? Yeah. And, and it's being filmed. And then the person behind the camera will probably be like the, the, the person who's getting fuck, fucked with brother, I mean, um, sister or auntie or mother. And the uh -huh. black woman is saying to the black man who is getting, um, who, 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 who's being dealt with in an unlawfully manner, they're saying to, the, to that man to calm down, to, to, to relax, to not resist, because their perspective is they want their nephew or their husband or their brother or their son to come home. And that's why they perpetuate the response of surrender. I feel like nowadays, what's happening now is that there's no surrender perpetuation perpetuated in the community now. I think that now yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's uh it's about standing up for your rights it's about standing up for your life at the same time i feel like now is not a time for negotiations mm -hmm. now is the time to do or get dealt with and if 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 we are in that time if i'm right about what i'm saying right now then it's only going to be a situational it's only gonna be a situation where you're gonna have bloodshed and nothing's gonna change 
Are you going to have bloodshed? It's just going to change. Yeah. That's why I feel like we're at right now. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is in order for things to stop, things really, really have to change on a, on a grand scale is what you're saying. Like people Dude, actually have, have to start showing that they do more than the Minnesota police. Be, you have to be, you yeah, have more yeah. than the Minnesota supporters behind this. The world is behind this. Yeah, yeah. This is something that Malcolm X has been trying to yeah. uh, orchestrate since since the 60s. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to make the world realize how black people are under attack in America. So with that said, I think, like I said, either we're going to have bloodshed and nothing's going to change or it's going to be right. bloodshed yeah. and everything's going to change. Everything's going to change, yeah. Most most definitely, man. You know what I'm saying? It's people just get fed up after a while, man. You can only abuse a marginalized group for so long before like other people start to notice that shit, yo. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and, and we just keep seeing the videos over and over and over again. And it, it just comes to a fever pitch. And and after yeah. a while, it's like, yo, yeah. fuck this, this this shit gotta change. You're gonna stop bully bullying these 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 unarmed people and these marginalized people. You go, you gotta stop doing that. And so we get a lot of um, different allies for different groups. Now, granted, there's yeah. a lot of people that take advantage of the situation that are, you know, there's like looters from out of town, maybe white folks stealing and shit. They, they, they rich and they still. So you always going to have people that, that kind of like poison the movement. But that, that's a that's a byproduct. That, honestly, that's a byproduct of the of the unfair treatment and the blue, uh, police brutality. Like a lot of people ask. Like, why is black people destroying their own communities and breaking up their own shit and their own resources? Right, right, first of right, all, right, right. First of all, like, we don't really own a shit in the community like that. You know what I'm saying? And then, yes, there's some black business owners that lose stuff or what have you. But this is a question that they should be asking. Right, 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 right. right. This is a question that should be asked. We wouldn't, you know, our people or whoever, like, these riots would have never happened if like the motherfuckers that was oppressing people that were minorities actually got justice, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. If they, if they, if the dude got arrested quick enough, or if a revenge was executed, or if some of these cops didn't get off, you know, I, this ain't gonna work if it's, it's loud like that, yo. Real talk. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I, right. I hear like right. a lot of feedback, but like if a lot of these cops didn't get off, like I tell people, it's not even, it's not even necessarily about the brutality. It's not even, um, it's, it's not even about white cops killing black people. It's the fact that they kill them and then they get off. Everybody kills everybody. Black people kill black, white kill white, Asian kill Asian. But the only problem is if a black man was killing a white person on, 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 on his knee and his neck, that black person would have went to jail immediately. And he probably wouldn't have made it to the court day. He probably would have got killed in jail. You know what I'm saying? By the cops. You feel me? Right, back. That's so, so that's the difference. Like we can talk about. Look, 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 look. What's up? You got the background on. I can't see. You, oh, never the, you can't see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Got the virtual see. background on. It's still there. Oh, never mind. You can't see it. You can't see it. You got it. You got to take on the virtual background. I'm at a, I'm at a party out, outside in Bridgeport, Connecticut, on the yeah. street. That's motherfuckers lit, nigga. We drunk. What? Having Yo, you... a wild time, motherfucker. Ah! Yo, well, go Jackson, ahead. you can't you can't turn off the virtual background. What? You, you can't turn off the virtual background. Nah, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how. To oh do that. yeah, you would have to fuck with your phone. But that but that's all I'm saying. Like people complain about the riots and stuff like that, but it's like none of this shit would have popped off. Like you. You're telling us to be civil. You're telling us not to do X, Y, Z. But it's like, we got to this point because of all the bullshit that our people went through. You stop the bullshit. Back. Yeah, you stop the bullshit, then, then there's no writing. Whether we break our own shit or, or whether we break other people's shit. Like, they, we didn't just start doing this shit out of nowhere. You know? My nigga, let me tell you something. White people and cops are trying to uh, there's video servicing now of them trying to cooperate with the pro 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 protesters and, and mm -hmm. submitting to pro protesters saying like, yo, we we got a problem with y'all, we love y'all, and right. blah, blah, blah. But you know what? That was the same way they, they took Africa. They took yeah. them, left the Bible. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. So, 
And I and I commend the protesters. I think one of, one of these days I'm gonna go out and support. I've just been like really really focused on working and shit. But like you know like we've been doing peaceful protests in my community, and it would be cool to go out and and and, and then support and stand amongst the people. I've been I've been having a, having a desire to to do that because I definitely believe that there, there needs to be a change in their strength strength in numbers. Hey Jackson man, yo, I'm gonna have to let you go because it's like it's not with all the background noise, it's not gonna sound right. So. Alright, yo. I'll you, my nigga. Yeah, we go continue his letter. Enjoy your day, man. Alright, you too. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh man. That shit is ridiculous. I can't do no podcast. That was the worst podcast we've been so far. But I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it do what it do with my own man. You know what I'm saying? I, I could do this shit for Dolo solo. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people, um a lot of people complain about um protest oh you shouldn't be breaking up your own community which 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 i do agree that's that's something that we should not like be doing destroying our own stuff because at the end of the day if you you know you live in your community you ride it and you destroy your own supermarket you destroy your own bank you you understand you you destroy your own pharmacy tomorrow you're going to need all those things when it's all gone you understand and you don't necessarily have a back backup plan for that and i i i understand you know I understand, um, I can see both sides of it, but the thing is, people are telling us to be civil and to be like tame and under control. And this is for the people that are rioting and stuff like that. And like I said before, there's a lot of people that that are um, opportunists and, and they just trying to steal some shit. But all of that thing, whether it's opportunists trying to steal shit, whether it's Antifa trying to create anarchy, you know, to, to, to instill martial law, or whether it's just people protesting, these are all byproducts of police brutality. It's like, you tell us, like people want us to be civil and not destroy shit, right? But you have people in positions of power and authority that are taking people's lives that are that are unarmed. You know what I'm saying? Like making a bogus false narratives. I was, I was afraid before my life, he tried to resist and you see the tape. Like it shouldn't take four people to, to, to to, to, to subdue a grown ass man. Don't you got tasers? Whatever happened to the taser situation? And then I, I, and well, maybe they're thinking, oh, like if you tase somebody too much, they might have a heart condition, um, so you'll kill them. So then you put your knee in their neck. <laughs> that, 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 that can trigger a heart condition. That's one of the things they're trying to say. That can trigger a heart condition and, 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 and have somebody kill just, just as easily. You understand what I'm saying? These riots, the looting, the protesting, the civil unrest is all a byproduct of unarmed people getting killed. But like I say, it's not about it's not about getting killed. That's why I hate when people always go, well, black on black crime, you're saying black lives matter, but black people kill each other. And listen, I'm a thorough believer that if you are a black person and you frivol frivolously kill another black person, you are servicing in aiding white supremacy. Because white supremacy, the people of the dominant society, they don't want to say it. They want us to destroy ourselves or they want us to be slaves for them. Either they want us destroyed or they don't want us to be slaves. And a lot of, some of those white race soldiers are killing us, but if we're killing each other, we're actually doing their work. But, uh, you know, and we're weakening, we, we are weakening our numbers. There, there's definitely strength in numbers. But, but the thing is, when black people kill other black people, once they go to court, they go to jail. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes, there's the no snitching rule. And yes, there are cold cases. But when it comes to something being on film and seeing a black person doing it to another black person, that black person is going down. That's what it is. It's not a, I mean, the murder is a, is, is a horrible thing, but the lack of justice is, is the next level. Because like I said, people die all the time. You know, people are getting killed all the time. The issue is a lack of justice because if there's no justice, you know what I'm saying? And if a certain group has an advantage where they could just randomly kill people of different groups, that actually makes them more powerful because the government is actually behind them. When they commit these atrocities towards other people, they can dominate and they can subjugate others. Cause it's like, yo, you know what? I could kill, I could have this gun. I can kill all you motherfuckers on camera and ain't nothing gonna happen to me. And then that other smaller or that other marginalized group they will quote unquote bow to you because of that shit. And that's just wrong, yo. You know what I'm saying? That's wrong.
So that's that's the issue, man. That's the issue. Just um, just 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 lack of justice. Um, when this will end, um, I don't know. Like some people theorize that they want the whole police system reworked, like all the judges and cops. But that's 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 kind of a dream. It can happen. <clears throat> you can overhaul the whole system. I'm 41 years old. I don't think that's something that we will see in our in our lifetime. But it's, it's just it's just little steps. Like you know, let's focus on small things. Like let's 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 try to get uh, Derek Chauvin convicted murder too. Like some people want murder one, the death penalty. But you have that's a hard proof because you have to prove that this man woke up. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna kill me a nigga today, but I'm gonna do it under under the guise of 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 of, of, of just doing my job as a law enforcement officer, you know. But it's like, how could he know that uh, George Floyd was gonna be at that particular um, bodega or whatever he was trying to buy some shit? And then he would have to have to know somehow that like that that, that they were gonna call the police on him, so. He would have to know that the 20s were fake somehow. Like it would have to be some elaborate s- system, elaborate scheme where, because they, they did say that George Floyd and um, Derek Chauvin worked together as security guards at the same restaurant at night and shit. So what, somehow like Derek Chauvin had to loan him like hundreds of dollars in 20s and shit and counterfeit 20s and like know that he was going to spend the counterfeit 20 at a certain store and know that that guy was going to call him and know that he was gonna have to subdue him and eventually kill him. When I was watching, when you watch the tape, and I'm afraid to play any um, any videos on, um, I'm afraid to play any videos on my uh, on my streams because uh, when I upload them to YouTube, you, YouTube got a very sensitive algorithm. Algorithm. And the last podcast that we put up, I could, I, I've tried to upload it like six times. And um, we had a like two minutes a clip of uh, Donald Trump talking about George Floyd, using George Floyd's name. And then we played like a couple of fight videos and and I think it was the fight videos, but it might be the Trump too. Like the, the the YouTube algorithm is very 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 sensitive, so we we just we just deleted we just deleted both of them shits. So so I don't want to um I don't want to play videos or anything like that. But um you know I forgot where the fuck I was at. What I was saying to y'all. So I gotta there's a lag. White people. Oh, you know what? Uh, it's a fucking lag. I don't want to play videos or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, yeah. But, um, but uh, what, was, what the hell was I talking about? Damn, yo, help me out, man. Tell me tell me the last 15 words I said, because I was, I was going somewhere. But, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying, um, Derek Chauvin, like in order to get him convicted for like murder one, you would have to prove that he created this elaborate system of, of cause they used to be coworkers. So maybe he loaned us some money. He knew it was counterfeit. Then he knew he was going to go to a certain store. Then he knew that the, the store person was going to call the, 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 the police, you know what I'm saying? For his presence. And he knew that the dude was allegedly high and you know, he choked him out, whatever. You know, you saw what happened. Um, you know, what's funny when you watch the video beforehand, when uh, 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 when they first uh, detained uh, George Floyd, he was just sitting down. He wasn't really trying to resist. And then they walked him across the street. And right before he hit the curb, he just collapsed. Like, he wasn't hit. I didn't see any resisting or anything. Like, the dude, the dude just fell out in front of a car. But at that point, when that happened, um, another uh, 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 police SUV, like, moved up. And it kind of blocked in between where you could see what was going on. But I do know in, in the video, um, the video when like right be, right before he got choked out, from the, the vantage of the um, uh, one of the people that were filming it, some dude was like, "Stop trying to fight, you ain't gonna win." So maybe he was he was trying to struggle or whatever, but that still wasn't a reason to leave your knee in his back for like nine fucking minutes until he died and shit. But it's gonna be hard to get murder two, murder one. But murder two, I I can definitely see it because if you're fighting somebody and struggle with somebody. And then they're disabled and they're clearly alive. And then you apply force and pressure to take their life away. And they're pleading for you to stop. That's, that's murder. That's not, it's not premeditated, but it's definitely like a, a crime of passion. You would probably 
passionate and you were excited and you were you were you were souped up for that particular moment. And they and then, you know they just they just took his life, man. It, there's there's no amount of advice that 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 I could give in those situ- um, types of situations. I mean, obviously, whenever you have a run-in with the law, as much as possible, you want to um not do things that can uh, kind of agitate them to put your put yourself in that position. Like, don't give them any fuel for the fire. But it's just unfortunate that sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes these motherfuckers is just happy-go-lucky and they exaggerate the situations as much as possible. And um, and that's just your fate. Yeah, it's nothing you can be. If a motherfucker want to kill you, it's pretty much nothing you can do. My thing is I just try to avoid police as much as possible. I try to drive the speed limit, do what I have to do. I don't drink, I don't hang out at clubs, nothing like that. And I and not saying that, not saying that you should end your whole fucking life just because it's a it's a couple of people in the positions of authority that take your life. It's, it's motherfuckers that'll kill you every single day. No. Excuse me, you still gotta live your life, but you have to be as, as, as cautious as, po- as, as possible and not give them extra fire, like trying to hold court in the street. I mean, that, that's obvious, you know? If, I mean, if it's, but if it's, you know, it's easier said than done because like when it comes down to a fight or flight, who knows how we, we, we would actually react in that situation when faced upon that. Like, I remember, I, I'll give you all a story. I caught a DUI back in 2008. And the crazy thing is though, 2008 this was right before this was right before um obama came in office but 2008 i had two banging jobs i was working at red lobster and i was working at the chowder pot which is basically like a it's another i was working at two rival seafood restaurants i was making like take home like almost a thousand dollars a week i was paying mad bills i was dating like five different chicks man money was out the wazoo i was actually starting to see light at the end of the tunnel for my, my, my financial situations, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times when things are going good for you and you get a little bit too cocky, you know what I'm saying? That's when the rug is pulled from under you. So anyway, um, I was, uh, I just had a, a beautiful date, this beautiful chick from, um, uh, what was she, I think she was from Boston or something like that. But I met her at Red Lobster, a beautiful red bone chick. We had a great date. We went to the casino. Yo, I won like, I never win when I gamble. I won like $500 at the casino that night. Yo, I almost won 40 Gs. I was one number off. I was like, yo, if I would have hit that, if I hit this 40 Gs, man, we got to go to the room and enjoy this night. She's like, if you hit the 40 Gs, you definitely come to the room. But anyway, you know, only won the 500. Me and her, she had a real great date. Uh, I dropped off to her place. Then another chick was hitting me up. Another chick was hitting me up in, um, in uh rhode island right and um so i was like bumping i mean i'm gonna go to rhode island now, now this is 2008 i wasn't really familiar with gps's i had like the old nokia green type phone like i was already like, with the green numbers and shit like i was always behind when it came to my phones only until like the last five years ten years or whatever but anyway so um to get directions to get directions to uh where i was supposed to go in rhode island um i literally um like I knew once I got to 95, I knew how to get there. You know what I'm saying? But I was like near Jewett City in Connecticut. I didn't know how to get there specifically. And I was a little tipsy too. I was like four Long Islands in and I had a bottle of Remy in the car. I just bought bugging. 29 years old, wild and shit. So I get to the gas station. I look at the map. I see where we're at. And I was like, oh, if I stay on this road, this road will take me to 95. And once I get, once I get to 95, I'll know exactly where I'm at. Boss. <sighs> Chick, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was one of them, them little, little freaky deaky parties, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And she was sending me all, she was sending me pictures. Like, my, it was funny. My phone was able to get pictures, but they were kind of like green like pictures. But like, cause she was sending me like all these sexy booty pics and stuff. And like, I was getting excited. I'm tipsy. I'm driving down this road and it's like real, real, real foggy. And I remember playing, play, I remember playing this day. The, the speed limit was like around 55, which is what I was doing. But once I entered to, into a, a certain town, it was foggy. I couldn't see. The speed limit dropped to to thirty five. I didn't peep that. A cop was coming. He wasn't. A cop clocked me, but he was driving while he clocked me. I don't know how he was able to to to, to clock me while he was driving, but he did. So I went past him and I saw the lights. You know what I'm saying? Because he was driving this way and I was driving this way. He wasn't standing still. I don't know radar guns could could do that. Who knows? But anyway. So I see him turn around and I was way ahead of him. So in my mind, dumb as hell, because I'm tipsy, 
like ah shit. At the time, um, you know, my my car wasn't registered, and this is this is this is the stupid thing. My car wasn't registered, right? But I was getting money. I could have easily reg registered my car, but it was insured, but it wasn't registered. I just didn't get around to do it. I was, I always procrastinate when it, when it, well, I used to always procrastinate when it comes to st silly things like that. So in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, he's way behind me. All I got to do is turn down one of these side streets. You know what I'm saying? Park, you know, park in somebody's backyard, turn the lights off and I'm straight. So I'm speeding, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I floored it doing like 90 on like route, like a route six types, route type route or whatever. If y'all know route six in Connecticut, y'all already know. Ain't no side streets, bro. <laughs> it's not my guardrails for three minutes. And I said, I'm looking in the distance and the cop, the cop car is gaining and gaining and gaining and gaining. And I was like, ah, man, I'm fucked. There ain't no side streets. It ain't, it ain't nowhere to turn. You know what I mean? And then my tire blew out. Like, I guess I was going so fast that my front right tire blew out. I was like, damn. I had to pee real bad. And, uh, you know, he finally comes to the car, guns drawn. But, like, the thing is, I was, in that, in that moment, I was, like, defeated. Like, I knew I was wrong. I knew my car wasn't registered. I knew I was drinking. I was wilding. Like, it was no point. I was I was totally in the wrong, so I think that made me more submissive. And then, luckily, the way my car works, the car that I had it was a Chevy Impala, it was an O2 Impala. The way that car works is once you stop, the door automatically unlocks. So he pulled the he pulled the door open and he had the guns drawn on me. Get out the car. I was like, listen, I was like, man, I'm not resisting. I know I didn't I know I didn't fucked up. You know what I'm saying? You know. Long story short, he was like, um, within five minutes, you know, he was patting me down and stuff like that. I said, yo, I said, the only thing I need to do, because I'm tipsy, so I'm stupid. I said, I just got to pee. That's all. You know, I know I know, I messed up. I know my car is not ready. My car isn't registered, but it is insured. You know, I was on my way to a party. I didn't, you know, realize how fast I was going, you know. I think I was lying. I, I didn't see way back there. I didn't realize it, blah, blah, blah. We got into the car, like, with, you know what I'm saying? I didn't resist. He was, he was, he was smaller than me, too. You know, I'm five, five, ten. He was like, uh, he was like five foot seven, five, six. I mean, he was a short cop, you know, but, and I was clearly bigger than him, but I, I let him put the cups on, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think he let me sit in, the, like, once I spoke to him, or I think he let me sit in the front seat. I think, and then we just got to talking. And then he was like, yo, man, he was like, dude, he said, the only thing I was going to do was give you a speed ticket. What the fuck are you running for? I was like, yeah, because I knew my car wasn't registered. I don't blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just going through the whole spiel. And plus, I'm tipsy. I'm not really thinking logically. First of all, my car not being registered, I shouldn't have been out there in the first place, right? So he gets me to the, you know, to the precinct. And I find, I, I don't know how I held that piss for so long. But, um, you know, let me go to the bathroom. I did some paperwork. I did the breathalyzer two times. I was like 0 .001, like, from the limit. At that point, I wasn't even tipsy at that point, but I still had it in my system. You know what I'm saying? So I think my phone battery was mad low. I think I had like 5% left, something crazy. So I kept the phone off. Um, like my car got impounded. So um, I had to see the thing is, once I, I won all that money, I forget, I think my bond was like 250 or something. I can't remember. But it was a Sunday morning, you know what I'm saying? Saturday night into a Sunday morning. So I was able to bond out. I, I was able to bond myself out. They got a justice, justice of the peace to come deal with my dumb ass three, four in the morning and shit. Got myself bonded out. And then the cop, um, the cop was cool with me now. He, um, he, first of all, he took me to um, where my car was impounded so I can get my belongings. So he let he let me get my belongings out of my car, right? And then from there he took me to to like a, a gas station, like a um like a uh, 7-Eleven or something like that. Cause we was in Rhode Island when I got arrested, but he took me to a 7-Eleven that was like on the Rhode Island um, Connecticut border, uh, uh, Eastern Connecticut, like kind of like like the New London area. And he just dropped me off there, and he was just like, you know, hope things get, you know, he says just he said just take care of your shit, man, like. Fuck, get your paperwork right. So you don't be doing this dumb ass shit. Easily could have been wrong. Easily could have went the wrong way. He easily could have dumped the steel into the car. 
You know what I'm saying? But I I wasn't trying to fight him. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not saying any other people like who've been killed senselessly, senselessly, senselessly by cops were resisting. Another, we have video like Philando Castillo. He wasn't resisting at all. He was just trying to show him his license and shit. Why would he tell him, "Yo, I got a gun," and then reach for the gun? That's stupid. But, but if I was acting rah rah, like fuck this shit, man, this bullshit, man. Yo, yo, a radar gun can't work while you're driving. Uh, and, and and the same, a, a radar um, uh, gun can't work while you're driving towards the car. I could have said anything. I could have been on some gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? I was bigger than him. I could have. I, I could have overpowered him and got or potentially got shot. A lot of shit could have happened in that situation. You know, but. Five minutes, I will five to ten minutes after I was in the car and he was driving me to the to the substation. We both started talking about fantasy football. We both were commissioners of our fantasy football leagues. I think my fantasy football draft was the next day. I, I made it too. <laughs> but we both were um commissioners of our, our fantasy football leagues. We both talked about it, and he was just he was disappointed. He's like, yo, what the fuck? He's like, dude, I didn't want to, I don't want to do all this paperwork and shit. I was just going to give you a ticket and that's it. You would have been good. I would have been straight. You know what I mean? And then the stress of that, you know, once, once that popped off, you know, the DUI and all this bullshit, I was so stressed. I lost one of my jobs because I was stressed and talking about it too much and it was affecting my performance. So I lost the job at the Chowder Pot. I had like five or six women at the time. I lost all the women. I lost all them bitches. I lost all the women. Money was all fucked up, man. My car, I don't know how I survived with it for so long, without it for so long. My car was impounded for like 40 days. They, yo, they even said it. And once I finally got out, the impound people, they, they gave me a deal and let me get it off $500 or whatever. But it was like, um, this is the longest that we've ever seen a car impounded that wasn't like involved in like some type of drug type thing. Sidebar, I think I had Cavassier in the front seat. Um, they they tore my car up looking for whatever. I had another empty bottle of Remy, but it was in like the sleeve of the back seat. They didn't see that shit. <laughs> they didn't find that. But you know what I'm saying? Like that 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 whole situation. And I've gotten I've gotten pulled over by cops like plenty of times, and I've never I, I've never had no like really no no major incidents like because I it's like if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I, I just have this attitude like, damn, you got me, man. Fuck. You know, I just have, but if you have this, I ain't do shit, I ain't do nothing like, like, like the energy that you put out a lot of times is the energy that you get back, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been pulled over by cops. But I remember when I was in um, trucking, um, when I first started my job at, uh, uh, I used to work for US Express. And, and this was back in um, 2016, as a matter of fact. It was, um, I finished like my training for the job and um, I used to commute from Bethel, Pennsylvania to motherfucking Hartford, Connecticut. It's a four hour commute, but I would do it like twice a week. I mean, twice a week, twice a month. And um, just coming back, I was coming through Waterbury and um, I, I think I was doing about 65, 70. But once you once you get towards Waterbury, the, the speed limit is, 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 is 55. And it's all, and I think cause it's all like a big ass hill, it's a basin. So, um, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm doing like 70 and 55. And mind you, I got a commercial driver's license. You get some shit fucked up on your, your commercial, your CDLs, your license is fucked. You can't get no kind of work for three motherfucking years. And I just finished the training. You know what I'm saying? I just finished the motherfucking training. Yo. And I was, going, I was supposed to do the test like two days later to, to actually get the job. So the cop pulled me over, the state, he pulled me over. Like, damn. He said, did you know the speed limit was 55? And I was like, I said, damn, I, I didn't, I was been driving for so long. I didn't even realize it. I was coming from Pennsylvania, you know, for my trucking job, blah, blah, blah. So he, he takes my information, like tall, white cop, buzz cut. He goes to the whip. He comes back. He was like, I'm gonna just let you off on the warning. Just, you know, watch your speed, like be careful. And I appreciate that shit. And I think, I think one of the reasons why I got off in that situation is because um I'm a commercial driver's like like because I because I got my CDL. Like people that have commercial driver's license, we are professional drivers that drive huge vehicles. So we are supposed to like be better drivers than like the average citizen because of the, the conditions that we drive in and the and the and the size vehicles that we drive. So that's another another instance that, that, that the cop let me off. 
I remember another time I got pulled over in Hartford and um and I was definitely definitely tipsy. But I was going to check this little Spanish chick on Garden Street in the North End. She had big titties and big booty, but she was like kind of going bald a little bit. But you know, she was a freak. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, I had some fast food, I had some French fries, and same time, um, this was I, and this was before the, the Rhode Island situation, but um my car still wasn't registered, registered, dumb as dumb as hell. I don't know why I just didn't get my car registered. What the fuck is my problem? But anyway, um, I'm driving, I, I bust the right, the cop is behind me. So I take a right on Garden Street, like Garden Albany, I take a right, right? And as I'm going down Garden, the first, I think one of the first side streets on your right, I think it's a one way, but it's a one way coming into the street, not going into the street. It's a one way coming, going out to Garden. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't realize that shit and the, and the cop was behind me and I wanted to eat my food real quick and he was driving kind of close. So I, I go, so I'm about to take the right, but I don't realize that there's no right turn because the, the one way was coming the opposite direction. So I go to take a right, oh shit. And then I bank back out and then I, and I line back up. Immediately, immediately the cop was like, oh hell no. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm like, fuck this shit, I just park. I start eating my fries and shit. He come to window, man. He said, what you doing, man? I was like, nah, I'm just trying to eat these French fries real quick. You know what I'm saying? I said, but I'm gonna I'm keep it real with you. I said, this car is insured, but it's, I mean, yeah, this car is insured, but I haven't got the registration yet. He's like, all right. I, th I don't know if, I don't know if, no, he didn't, he didn't even run shit. I just, I was, I was keeping it real. I said, I'm just eating the fries. He's like, what you about to go after this? I was like, yo, it's a sexy chick over there. I'm about to go, I'm about to go check this chick in this building. He's like, you about to get some pussy, huh? <laughs> I think, was he, was he white? Oh, I can't remember. I think he was white. Well, I think he was Latino. He said, no, he was white. He was white. He's like, you better get some pussy, ain't you? I was like, I was like, hell yeah, yo. He's like, all right, man. He's like, yo, just get your shit registered. Stop playing, man. And the thing is, I should listen to him at that moment. I got my shit registered because a few months later, I would not have had that anxiety when I was in Rhode Island. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to take care of all your shit and make sure your P's and Q's. Put it this way. You want to give yourself, so like if a cop won't want to kill you, he going to want to kill you. There's nothing you can do about that. But you don't want to give him extra ammo. You want your license up to date. You want your insurance up to date, your medical card on your fucking, on your CDL. You know, you want all your stuff up to date. You want to follow the road, lose, road rule laws as much as possible. Like the whole goal is not to give them any, any, any incentive to want to, to want to murder you. Like they already want to murder you as it is, period. A racist, bigot, I'm not saying all cops, but I'm just saying like a racist, bigoted type motherfucker want to take you out period, especially when they got a gun and they're in a position of authority. You know what I'm saying? But I go, my strategy, my what's worked with me and my few stories that I'm telling you guys is that I didn't give them any extra reason. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point, I didn't give them any other, any extra reason to, 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 to take me out. Because when you don't have weapons, you don't got no weapons in your hands. The only thing that you have, yes, there's a there's fight or flight. But fighting is not only with this, man. It's with this. And flight is not only with this. It's with this. You're trying to, you're trying to talk them down. You're trying to be a negotiator. You're trying to, and sometimes it's, this don't say, it's just, it's just the whole demeanor, man. Like every time that I got pulled over, I was, I, was, I fucked up. Nine times out of 10, I was wrong. So that was the attitude. Like, damn, they got me. Ah, shit. I fucked up. And that, but that's just, that worked for me. I'm not saying that it worked for anybody else. I'm just relaying stories as, as far as like what worked, what worked in my situation, the, the, the various times that, that, that I got pulled over in life by cops. You understand what I'm saying? So, but now I'm sober. I don't drink. I don't smoke. It ain't no weed in the whip. It ain't no, no booze, no nothing. Like if a cop pulled me over, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Record clean shit, you know, besides, the, besides that DUI, there's nothing recent or anything like that. So when a cop pulled me over now, it's just, it's going to be boring for him. Like, damn, we, we, we wasting our time, man. Shit, you know. But if I could teach my, my nephew anything, my nephews, anything, is make sure all your paperwork and shit is legit. You know what I mean? I said, try to avoid cops as much as possible, as much as you humanly, humanly can. Try to avoid rah rah niggas that's all loud and shit, bringing attention and making shit hot. 
You know what I mean? If you're a young man, you should be about these ladies, man, chilling, chilling with chilling with these shorties. You shouldn't even be chilling with niggas. Unless they unless they dudes that's like that you're building with that have similar goals, whether you like I remember when I was real young, we used to all we used to all dance and shit. So we would always go to this abandoned house and we would just be pop locking and and, and fucking and, and you know what I'm saying? We would that's that's all we would do. And then later on it evolved into we used to draw comics. I used to draw comics. I used to write stories. In my attic, I got like, I probably got like three or four or five comic book stories. I got all kinds of shit drawn. That's all we used to do in Hartford High. We would walk around with the with the big art portfolios with all of our art. Me, my boy Jemiah Smith, aka Waterstones. We would walk around with the art and so and my boy Muncho, Ramon Rivera, who I haven't heard from in a long time because he became a Jehovah's Witness because of me. And you know, he married into the religion. So we don't we don't hear from Muncho that much no more. But we would walk around with our portfolios and be drawn and shit. That's and so if, if you're gonna roll with a crew, roll with a crew that's as as into positivity, doing some good, some actually good productive things. Not and this is this is for the youth, you know what I'm saying? Not just like smoking and drinking and just being on some bullshit, but actually doing some productive things that'll set your life up in the future. You know, I've made a lot of like silly mistakes growing up, man. You know what I'm saying? I made a lot of silly mistakes that I'm still trying to repair, you know, trying to get the life in order, like. 20 years after the fact, 25 years after the mistakes that I've made. You know what I mean? But so hopefully, what did, what did, Jay, what did Jay say, Jay-Z? Hope did that. Hopefully you don't have to go through that. You know what I mean? Like I try to give motherfuckers advice. Don't make some of the, the stupid, like silly decisions I made. So you're not trying to repair yourself like 20 motherfucking years later, man. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to set yourself up. Like at the age that I'm at, like I'm 41, a lot of people that start have like started a career like soldiers, like my boy Ty Gorham. He was on here for a second. Shout out to Ty Gorham. Thank you for your service, man. The brother been in the military since he was 17. We was best friends at EC Eastern Connecticut State University, man. The dude is retirement age. He got all kinds of medals and, and stars and stripes and, and things of that nature. He can retire right now at 40, but that's only the beginning because he he has some type of pension. Bam. And now he's at the age. He don't gotta uh, hustle and, and scramble as much and he can fucking live the rest of his life. Like, I feel like you, you supposed to bust your ass for the first 40 years so that the next 40 years is easy. But see, a lot of us, we have that shit backwards. We play around and we bullshit a lot for the like, first 30 or 40 years. And then we're in all kinds of debt. And we like, we all, you know, we're in all, all, all kinds of debt and, and, and um, uh, whether we got locked up and financial and physical debt. Or, or, or our health, like we got fat and all, um, or what have you. Just think of anything negative. Like we, we, we basically squandered our money and we squandered our freedom and we squandered our youth. And now we're trying to like, we're trying to play catch up at the age of 40, but this is the problem. You don't have the same energy, vitality and vigor at 40 years old that you had when you was 20 years old. So like, it's better to hustle and grind hard when you're younger, cause you still got the energy to do that shit. But, you, but the problem, you don't have the wisdom. Not everybody, is like a Dave Chappelle that decided that they wanted to do comedy at 13 years old and they had a support system that was willing to take them to comedy clubs and things of that nature. You know, like my mother, when I used to draw comics, like my mother, like whatever endeavor that I tried, she um, she definitely supported me. Uh, when I was on, um, a drawing comics, she bought me a, a portfolio, not portfolio, I'm sorry. She bought me like a draw, an art table. You could flip it up. You can draw like you can draw on an angle or you, I, I was weird because you know, a lot of artists like to draw with the board like straight up like this. They like to draw like this, but like me, I like to draw like this, like with, with, with the table flat. I don't know why. And like all my art teachers in, um, in college would tell me like, you know what I'm saying? Don't draw like that. But I was one of the best artists drawing that, that, drawing that way. So, but my mother, she supported me as far as that. But like when I was younger, I never, like I was all over the place. I used to want to be a comic book artist, but then I changed it up. One, um, I wanted to do the music for a little bit, um, for a while, for a while actually. You know, what I'm saying once I got into college, that's when I I, I re reinvented myself, and I came out of my shell as far as like singing in front of people. So I used to always sing in front of people. Like shout out to Terrence Bado out of New London. He was one of my college buddies at ECSU, and my boy Christopher Dash. We actually um formed this like small little group, and Christopher Dash would play the piano, and me and Terrence like, and he would sing too, and we would all sing in like this little music hall area in practice and we did like a talent show back then but i came out of my shell as far as singing and performing in front of people once i got to ecsu but i was you know i was always i was always switching shit up so i wanted to be a singer a little bit 
And then I started getting to poetry a little bit more. Then I used to want to be a math teacher. You know what I'm saying? Then I've made dumb decisions as a youth and I had to, I had to change some things up or whatever. So I went from math teacher, I went to business, but I wasn't passionate about business. But art was always there. Like I did a shit ton of art classes and I was killing it. So eventually one of my advisors at Eastern, they told me to, um, that um, the, the degree that you can get from what you have is uh, you can do be a graphic designer. So eventually I became a graphic designer and um, uh, I got a degree in graphic design in 2004. You know, and um, and what else? Um, but I never really, I never, I wasn't passionate about it. It was just, it was just a matter of, I just wanted to get the hell out of, um, I just wanted to get the hell out of college because I had been there, I was there from '97 to 2000. Then I took two semesters off, and then, I, and then I, and I went back uh, 2002 to 2004. You know, what I'm saying so it took me like six, six, six years, but the last two years that I, it, it could have been faster. But I started to realize that, um, you know, a full course load is five courses and it was just too much for me to keep up with. So I just started doing only four classes, 12 credits. Like I dropped it from uh, 15 to 12 credits. So that, that's what gave me that extra year. I could have been done, if I would have did the full course load, I could have been done um, in 2003. I could have been done, but, but nah. I think even like my last my last semester, I think only, it was like one class. It was, it was some semesters I was only taking like two classes and I was doing that and I was working, but, and I was commuting. I was driving to Willamette like every other motherfucking day and I was working because I was young. I was 21, I was 22, I was 23 and I had like two jobs. So it wasn't nothing for me to commute every other day, every other day to study, to be working on music and poetry and shit like that. And he'd be working two jobs. I just had the, the energy for that, you know what I'm saying? And that's what you're supposed to grind and hustle for. But like I said, at that time, I made like some 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 dumbass mistakes that like that hampered me and shit like that, you know. But I say to the youth, even before you 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 when you're when you're faced with like certain decisions in life, you know what I'm saying? You can't only just think about the moment, man. You have to look at what other people went through and look at what you could potentially go through. And if whatever it is that you're thinking about doing, whether it's um, drinking some shit, smoking some shit, smashing some shit, you know what I'm saying? You a young kid or whatever, you got to really, really ask yourself. If this goes wrong, right? How can this affect my life? 15 years. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a hard thing to conceive because, you know, we live in the moment for the pretty much where we don't, I mean, people, people think about the future or what have you, but as a youth, you never really been sick. You never really been hurt. You don't really, unless you're into the gang life and shit like that. You don't really experience death, like people dying left and right. You're still young, right? So you don't really know anybody that's on child support, or you don't know anybody that's really going through divorce. Like, yes, there are exceptions, but for the most part, the average 19, 20, 21 year old, they don't they don't see anybody going through these things. So it's hard for them to 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 envision themselves going through some shit because they don't see anybody in their circle going through that shit. But now with social media, like see social media also didn't exist in, in, in 2000, 2001. Yeah, we had like chat lines and shit like that AOL, but for the most part, social media wasn't the juggernaut that it is right now. You understand? So there wasn't a lot of information out there to de deter you from doing certain things because you had no case study. You had no, nobody to compare it to. You didn't know, like, you know what I'm saying? You didn't know about uh, child support or, or anything like that because you don't know nobody that was, you get 20. Who the fuck is going through child support at 19 or 20 years old? Who the fuck got divorced at 19? Yes, it happens, but for the most part, who gets divorced 19, 20 years old? Who's dying, of, who's, who's, who's dying on a regular basis at 19 or 20 years old? None of this shit you see. And motherfuckers drinking and getting high and doing all this crazy shit and nobody's having any major calamity, you know, so, or having any long lasting physical effects because they're still young. They're not even finished developing yet. So you're not thinking about none of this shit, man. But, but boom, when you look back at it in retrospect, you're like, damn, I want to change some shit up. And if we over 40, I mean, we can't really, we can't change nothing in the past to help anything at this moment. But you still got some life left. I, I feel like I still got about 30, 35 years. I feel like I still, I feel like, honestly, I feel confident. Like my grandfather is 80. I thought oh, he's, he's more than that. You know, and he's doing good. So it's like, 
I feel like I still got 40 or 45 years. So my first, my first 40, I definitely underachieved. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I, you know, I definitely made some dumbass decisions. You know what I'm saying? I've, 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 I've made life. I mean, being born as a black man, you're already at a, at a disadvantage. But if you are born a black person and then you are consciously making wrong decisions, just like I said, don't give a cop an extra incentive to be that much more aggressive towards you as much as you possibly can. Don't make life any more difficult than what it is being born a certain skin color, man, or just being born a certain class or being born in a, in a, in a certain situation. Man. So, so moving forward, it's, it's all about me just trying to make better decisions for the twilight years, you know what I'm saying? For, you know, like I still feel, it's, 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 it's wild. Cause I don't, I don't drink and I, and I think that really, really helps me. Like my, my nose is more clear. I mean, I'm still fat because I got a sweet tooth. Like I got rid of the booze, but then I got a major, major sweet tooth. And that's just something that I, I have to work on. You know what I'm saying? But I feel young and healthy. If I was slim, I would be feeling like I was like 25 right now. Like the only thing that still reminds me of how old I am is my weight. That's it. If I wasn't the weight that I was right now, none of y'all would know. Y'all wouldn't know how old I was. Y'all wouldn't know that shit. My weight gives away. I still don't got wrinkles. Yeah, I got little scars here and there. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking out. I'm, 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 I'm a handsome man. I, I think about, I, I definitely think about death, you know? I think about like what type of legacy, what will people say once I leave? Like, which we really, that really shouldn't be an issue because you're not, as far as we know, you're not going to hear anything that anybody says once you pass on. Death is a de- is a gateway to another dimension, one that we all have to go through, and we're all going to go through. You know. So I think about that life insurance and just trying to set things up. I feel like even in life, you know, say you're, you're over forty years old and you you really didn't really save much money, and you don't have much of a, like a financial legacy, which which I don't. I'm not even gonna be. I'm gonna sit here and make it seem like I. Got all the answers. Like I know how to talk. This is the thing. I, I'm I'm very educated. I'm well, not very. I'm just I'm just educated. I know how to talk. I have a mastery of the English language, but I'm very irresponsible, you know. And I'm lazy, and I'm unorganized. So you can be as intelligent as you want to be, but if you if you're not motivated and you're unorganized, man, and you you just become a slave to habits, whether it's a slave to ice cream, a slave to alcohol, a slave to pornography, all those things are addiction that can hamper the light. Like we all star children, we're supposed to shine. But when you have, when you have certain vices and things that you're into that 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 take up a lot of your time, that could be given towards chipping off the co- the carbon around you to to watch that to, to watch that light shine. And this is the metaphor, you know what I'm saying? We're star children. They say we're from the stars. You know what I'm saying? So the purpose and what do stars do? Stars shine. And the way you shine is by expressing yourself creatively or doing things that can help society. But if you're only just only pleasing yourself whether it's through porn, whether it's through sex, whether it's through alcohol or what have you. There's nothing wrong with any of those things, but when you, you only do that, when you're, when you're only a consumer and you're not a creator, you're like, you're like a parasite. You're not really building. You understand what I'm saying? If you only consume, but don't create, what, what type of legacy are you using? You know, you're no better than uh, ver- like roaches and rats and shit like that. If all you do is consume and, 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 and you don't really create or build or help anybody else out and it's not even from a financial standpoint you know what i'm saying you can help people out in knowledge you can inspire people it's a lot of people like i know a lot of y'all think i probably talk too much and i'm, I'm with the bullshit and i ain't shit but a lot of people hit my hit up my inbox and tell me how they uh, how i've inspired them in one way or another you know what i'm saying like there's, there's a couple of names i'm not gonna say the names there's a couple of people like when i was on my pro black shit and into jason black and all that and i was reading like a lot of books back in 2012 20, uh, 2013 a dope ass rapper um, uh, from the from the Hartford area used to always hit me up, and I used to always put him on a different stuff to read and and people to, to to look to. And like the motherfucker's doing great right now, doing way better than me. So I'm great at giving advice and shit like that, but I got to start taking that advice because they, they always say easier said than done, but you still have to say it. Ultimately, you still got to say it though. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't know how we got on this 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 crazy wild tangent um i'm not going to do this further uh today because uh 
the show was supposed to go one way uh, with uh, comedian Jackson. Um, I'll, probably, I'll bring him on in, in the future, but for future reference, anybody that want to do this podcast, you know, if I invite you on, it it would uh, help if you are in a quiet, stable environment, so we can actually have a conversation, you know, and and we can equ- we can both be heard as far as uh, what's going on. But I mean, it's it's all good, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Got to got to keep the podcast going. Got to keep the, um, the podcast moving. Keenan Floyd, he um he couldn't make it tonight because he's out in L.A. And he was um, uh, participating in the protests. I want to see when the next one is going down in Connecticut. I'm going to ask around because I definitely want to show up and show some support and show show these people that I, I do support what's going on. I think one of the greatest things about the protests is that so many people, like I said, even the people, some people's with the bullshit and they capping, whatever, but worldwide attention is being brought to brutality that Black people are facing and people are getting tired of this shit and people are being a lot more vocal about it. Yes, I theorize a lot of white people have a lot of white guilt and they see this as a perfect opportunity to d- destroy whether whatever racism that they have inside them. So yes, we're gonna march and we're gonna stand outside. And But you know what? Fuck it, it's, be- it's better than nothing. It's just like the um, um, NFL with Roger Goodell, he's apologizing, to, uh, you know, he's saying that they were wrong as far as like, uh, uh, players protesting and stuff during the games and stuff like that. And a lot of people that are for the movement are like, yeah, he's not sincere. He don't mean it. Whatever. Yo, you got to start somewhere though. Damn. Okay, even if he's not sincere. The whole point is putting that out into the universe and casting spells. You tell yourself some shit over and over and over again until you start to believe it. So maybe, maybe Goodell isn't sincere at first, but there's a lot of people that follow Goodell that are listening to that. And they was like, you know what? Black people is getting treated shitty. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I need to start changing this. I'm definitely seeing a change. It was this white dude. I was shopping at Audi yesterday or the day before. And he just randomly came up to me and he was like, well, I'm really, really sorry what happened in Minnesota. And I know he meant George Floyd. And um, even though I don't know who George Floyd is, but I, I, I see where he was coming from because even though he said that, and we spoke for like 20 minutes, well, and I could tell he probably had racist ideas and ideologies. He was about 65 years old. But the fact that he just picked a random black person and we had this conversation publicly and some of the whites was listening, this is good because now like even old white motherfuckers is thinking like, damn, y'all really treated black people bad just for the, the color of their fucking skin. Yes, a lot of us still, yes, a lot of us are aggressive. Yes, a lot of us rob and do all this crazy shit. But that's the thing. We have, when you're born at a disadvantage, man, that just gives you the, the, the propensity to do negative things. It doesn't justify it. But like I said about the whole riot, people complaining about the riots. If George Floyd was never killed in that ugly fashion, the riots would have never happened. You would, there would be no looting because of that. And, 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 and this, the same thing uh, uh, with Black folks. Yeah, we rob and do all this crazy shit and steal. A lot, most people steal for hunger because they're hungry, not because they're trying to floss. You know, if we was getting... Uh, treated fair. We had a fair shake. If we had a 40 acres of a mule, if we actually got reparations, yes, there's still going to be black people that squander the money. There's going to be, be, uh, be people that waste it frivolously on themselves and drugs and shit like that. But for the most part, the person that would have stole because they were starving and they didn't have no money, now all of a sudden, they have, I think I did the math, now they got almost $400,000 where they could potentially not have to steal for $400,000 working and start up something for themselves. You know? So we, we, we talk about the aftermath. We talk about the aftermath of the, of, of the disease, but we don't talk about how the disease got there in the first place. You know? Yes, you, wanna be, you got the cancer spread and oh shit, the cancer is here. You know, spread is eating your bones out. You wanna, you wanna carve it out, but how did, how did that cancer get there in the first place? That's the thing that we have to start addressing. It, it, we, it's, it's not only, um, we, we not even, we're not only talking about treating the disease, we're talking about vaccine in the motherfucker, you know? I'll t- I- I tell you right this, man. If, if black folks got reparations or, or some type of benefit for all their ancestors and us being put behind having a 400 year, uh, uh, having uh, uh, people of dominant society having a 400 year head start. <clears throat> excuse me. If, if black folks got their reparations, man, you know how much crime will go down because of that shit? Blacks on blacks. 
like I said, yes, there's exceptions to the rule. Yes, there's some motherfuckers that's junkies. They far gone. They 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 they, they they're gonna squander their money. But I think for them, I think for the most part, I think most black people aren't criminals. I think most black people aren't evil motherfuckers. I think most black motherfuckers just want to just live their life and not and, and not be involved in and just have fair shakes and opportunities. You know, but you tell us to be civil. You tell us to be X Y Z, and and it makes sense. But it's like you conditioned us to be this way and now all of a sudden you're confused why we act like a lot of us are acting this way. You got to address the root of the problem. Yes, I implore all my black folks, all my black friends to be a law abiding citizens and to pool resources, you know, and, and to, to win. You, you always fight, but fight with this as opposed to fight with this. I implore that. You know what I'm saying? But if some people feel like this is what they got to do, because I don't I don't knock anybody for doing that. But we would never have to fight in the first place if we was treated fair in the first Like If we were treated the way human beings were supposed to be treated, there, there, there would be no issue. That's, 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 the, that's the thing. A society can only progress forward if the people that are quote unquote at the bottom of society or people who are viewed as being at the bottom of society have fair treatment. Because if you can treat somebody that's lesser than you or, like, or, or who you perceive as being lesser as fair, you know, or if you can tr treat someone who you perceive as being less than yourself in a fair manner, you can treat anybody fair. That's just, that's basic logic right there, you know? So if we getting shit on because society I don't feel like we're at the bottom of society, but I'm just saying as far as how we're viewed, which is why so many throughout the world are protesting for us in behalf of us, because we're, we're, we all need to be start to be viewed on the same level. But if, the, if you can fuck over him, anybody can get fuck over, fucked over. What they say, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. See, we have to strengthen. I'm not saying we're weak. I'm just saying this is a metaphor. But because we're at the bottom of the barrel, so if we strengthen, if, if we strengthen, the, the society strengthens. Period. That's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying. That's why these protests are going on. I, you know, you can complain about the rioting and the thievery. You know, you got all this energy complaining about the riots. But people stealing shit. People not killing each other. People aren't killing unarmed people during these riots. Yes, in Chicago, 30, 40 people die every weekend. Some crazy, whatever the statistic. Yes, yes, people get shot in Detroit. You know what I mean? Yes, these things happen. You know, but it's gunfights. This is one man with a gun shooting another person. One man robbing a dude that owed him some drug money. You know, it's 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 hood shit going on. And I and if that motherfucker gets caught on camera, he's going, no snitching or not, he gets caught on camera, he's going to jail. The problem is a cop shouldn't feel so comfortable. Like, damn, if I kill this black person, ain't nothing gonna happen to him. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get money in the GoFundMe. That's even more incentive to kill your black ass. If you could potentially get money, you a cop, right? You know what I'm saying? You, you work, work in a beat, you see this black person who you see as subhuman, not saying you want to kill him, but you just don't give a fuck about him as much. I talked about this in another, another video. We, well, uh, uh, white folks in general don't care about black people because if they did, if they did care, the things wouldn't be the way they are overall. And not caring doesn't mean you hate. It just means you don't really care what happens to this person, whether they get fucked over at school, whatever. I'm sipping my lattes, you know what I'm saying? I'm eating my kale and I'm doing fucking yoga. I'm, I'm good. But this cop, you know what I'm saying? He got his gun in the back of his mind. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be extra aggressive with this black person. And if I kill him, I'm gonna get a paid leave. And then motherfuckers gonna hit my GoFundMe and I'm not gonna get convicted. You, as a police officer, you should have it in the back of your mind. You know, I have to respect my power and I have to respect the authorities that were granted, granted to me by the public to use this as responsibly as I can because if I fuck up the penalty I I could potentially get if I fuck this up is more harsh than a citizen. Cause you should know better. Doctors, that's you know how doctors have medical malpractice insurance for like millions upon millions of dollars because they are held to a high standard when it comes to fixing people and 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 and, and patching people up and 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 
servicing people medically. They're held to a high standard. So when a doctor fucks up, he's done. So he's going to do his best to take care of his patients as much as he possibly can. Why can't cops have the same attitude? If you abuse your power, if you, if you abuse the badge, your penalty should be three times more stiff. Like if a black man gets five years getting caught with a nickel bag of cocaine or some shit. If a police officer gets caught doing some cocaine, he should get 15 years, three times as much. Because it's a, it should serve as a deterrent for that officer not to want to abuse his power. And that's how you treat people more fairly. That's how that's that's to me, that's a that's the solution right there. I'm not gonna I'm not saying it's gonna end police brutality and racism, period. But I feel like that's one progressive step that we can take is to make uh penalties a lot harsher for people that abuse the authority, abuse the badge. But trying to prove it is one thing, but that's when it comes. If you cops, if you so-called good cops or good cops, yo, y'all can easily expose way a, a lot more people. And then you say, oh, you know, we're afraid to lose our jobs if we can get blacklisted, blackballed. Well, that's when we come as a black community and, and, and we need to start giving funding to um, our heroes and the force on the inside. Because you know what? When George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin and got off, he got over $400,000 of donations from racist people. So that cop that tried to, I don't, I'm, I don't have any examples off the top of my head, but it, it has happened. So that cop that tried to stand up you know, for his, uh, you know, for a black person that was that was getting brutalized by one of his fellow officers, and he reported him and stuff like that, and he's getting a hard time. And the precinct, the precinct, there's a movie called Blue Shield that talks about that shit. But the whole precinct turned against him, got him fired, and spray painted his locker, doing all this bullshit. That cop, that black cop, should have an army of people, of an army of black citizens. The four, the whole fourteen percent of of 30, 40 million Americans should be have this dude's back and every single last one of them should donate shit. If every single, if, uh, if that 40 million, if every single one of them donated 10 cents to his GoFundMe, he would have $4 million and he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have to be a part of that police uh, precinct. He would have $4 million, right? And with that money, you understand what I'm saying? He can get, he, he, he can lawyer up. And he can get the proper investigators to really, really in, in, invest that pro police precinct, and then he has also enough money to give himself uh, security for uh, uh, security for potential retaliation, whether it's bodyguards and whether it's security cameras. He can re relocate himself. There's all kinds of things that one particular cop could have did if we would have had the support of the people. But a lot of these cops don't want to be good cops, and it doesn't necessarily have to be black. It can be white cops too. But a lot of these people don't want to be good cops because they don't have the support of the people if they lose their job. We claim we want leaders, but we don't support our leaders we don't support the motherfuckers as in position that can actually help out so that's one way we can help too you know yes out of frustration you're going to break shit you're going to trash shit you're going to destroy shit that's a lot of energy but also you know what the person that the cop that's the quote unquote good cop that's in the police street that's going to infiltrate this motherfucker you know what i'm saying and expose everybody we can have a sting type of operation like somebody go in on some sleeper cell shit you know, to one of the most corrupt police precincts, you know what I'm saying? And the whole black community, 30, 40 million people, they all put 10 cents into a private GoFundMe that's specifically for him. And so he can get as much information and data as possible within that police precinct. And then once he starts exposing them, they fire him or whatever, but it's cool because he got 3 million, he got $4 million, $4 million that was waiting for him. And he, he collected all the information and data to bring this motherfucker down. And this is something that should collectively happen throughout all police precincts in the United States, man. We should start privately funding these people and not through GoFundMe. I think Tommy Sotomayor talked about it. We need to have some, um, some type of different fund where you can don donate a person money. Where, um, you know what I'm saying? A, a black owned... Go fund me. I don't know if that exists, but I'm I'm sure there's ways there's ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's ways to do it. I'm not don't get me to start racking my brain and shit. But we should have certain funds for uh our soldiers infiltrating. And I'm not saying infiltrate like you want to set bombs and shit or some 9-11 shit, but just getting all the information of all the crooked motherfuckers that's 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 doing bullshit to, to minorities and, and just people of a lower class in general and collecting like this huge dossier. You say you want to clean out the whole police force and the police system, that's what you do. 
you put certain, you strategically put different cops in different places, different cadets, like they was training their whole life. Like a five-year-old boy should be trained to be a cadet to infiltrate this motherfucker from five. And by the time he's 21, he got 16 years. He can he can totally just blend in and be, be this cop. And the whole time he just get information, get information for about five years of all the motherfuckers doing the wrong shit, kind of like Andy Dufresne and um Shawshank Redemption when he was he had the books as far as all like how they was uh, cheating on the taxes in the prison and shit like that. And then when he finally escaped, he had that big ass book and he put it out and he got everybody fucking round up. But you gotta build that paper trail and you have to have somebody in position. And in order, in order to have somebody in position, the people we have to help that person put the money, give them the money. You know what I'm saying? Donate to these people, man. And to me, that's, yes, um, I feel like the riots, it definitely, um, it makes people scared and it, it, it causes like a, a quick reaction. Like you see Roger Goodell from the NFL is backing down as far as I'm um, saying he was wrong as far as with Kyle Kaepernick and um, different police pre precincts are being defunded. That's cool, but we're smaller in numbers, so we we will we, we'll, we'll, we'll like minorities in America. We we won't ever defeat the system. They they could just like on some be on some on some on some um, some Nazi Germany night type shit and start firing on crowds and shit. Like it, the shit could potentially get ugly. All it takes is one motherfucker on court on court our side that infiltrated us to, to pop a gun in the air and just all chaos will ensue. You know what I'm saying? Thank goodness that it hasn't happened. But just how they can infiltrate us, we need to infiltrate them. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can you can you can fight with might or you can fight with this. You know what I'm saying? All those th tens and thousands of people that's that's rioting and stuff like that, out of those tens or hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, out of them hundreds of thousands of people, right? It's 50 states, right? Hundreds of thousands of people rioting. Why we can't take like 500 of those people, right? And instead of them rioting and smashing shit, their job is to infiltrate. And, 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 and go into these um, different police precincts and go into law and things of that nature. And their, their job is to expose everybody inside. It's going to take some time. It's going to take about five years to, to, to collect a, a big enough dossier. But once you have all the information, that's how we get change, man. That's how we're going to change everything. We're not going to change it by force. That's temporary. We're going to change it by infiltrating, man. America is the strongest army in the world, right? No country can fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? Like China got a lot of China got billions of people. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the, a lot of those billions they don't know how to use weapons. They're they're farmers. You understand what I'm saying? No country could fuck with us, right? But there was a virus that was put into our country called COVID-19 that crippled the motherfucker economy. That virus is is, is just it, it. We're still you know fighting it off or whatever, but it, it, it weakened the economy. You know, it caused civil unrest. That shit did a lot of havoc and terror from something that they put on the inside that was a passive aggressive attack. We can use that same concept of the COVID virus, but instead we can have uh, uh, our soldiers, I could say, be, becoming cops, lawyers, judges, doctors, lawyers, all that shit, and just gathering information on everybody that's abusing this shit. Fuck this no snitching shit. You know what I'm saying? Within this plan that I'm, I'm coming together with. And we have all these people in these different positions to expose these motherfuckers. That's how you change the whole thing. That's how you change it, man. You gotta have the right people on the inside, unbeknownst to them, gathering information. That's how you change everything. I don't know how to start that. Listen. I can only give you the ideas. I'm 40 years old. I got DUIs and shit. I got a record. Hey, I, I, I can't do it, but I, I, I understand how to do it because I see how other people have done it. I see how they infiltrated us with a, with a disease. I see, like, look at 9-11. They didn't, they didn't attack us head on. They put motherfuckers in position in flight schools in the United States. <laughs> and then eventually they overtook the planes and they did what they did. They fought from the inside. We have, to use, we have to use the tactics of our oppressors against them, you know? That's the only way we're going to win, man. Yeah. And we don't have to fight with this. Yes, we, we do to an extent, defend yourself, whatever. But ultimately, this is what's going to make you win, man. You want to change the whole system, get the right people inside, and we as a people should be backing those people that's on the, that's on the inside. Don't got to donate a lot. Ten, cent, ten cents ain't shit. 
Even if 10 million people donated 10 cents, that's still a million bucks. If I'm a cop, I'm trying to bring down this precinct. You know, I'm making 40 grand a year as a cop, 35, whatever the hell it is. I don't really, you know, depending on where you live, whatever. And I'm exposing everybody. I'm Yes, I'm worried about, I got a family, you know, to feed. I got, you know, I, I got things I got to take care of. I want to help you out. Like Malcolm X died broke. That's ridiculous. He should have never died broke. That don't make no fucking sense. We claim we want, we want leaders, but we're not really, the, we're not willing to like feed our leaders, man. Make sure that they're straight so they can fight the good fight. But we pay war, we pay taxes like a motherfucker that 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 takes care of the military. Why can't we do the same thing with our people, with our insurrectors? That's insurrection. That's I think that's the right word. If it's wrong, you know what I mean. You want a, a, a motherfucker to infiltrate the system and, and 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 change it, not destroy it, but just change it. You know, get better people in there, man. But I I, I do I honestly do see like a change on the horizon, man. I, I see it. Just from that old white guy coming up to me, white people are talking to me more, just being nice. And they, whether it's guilt or not, you know, that's good. You treat me like a fucking human being, not just like some ghost that's just walking around that barely exists. You know, I think that's a good thing. They put Black Lives Matter in front of um, the White House. Awesome. Awesome. That shit is dope. If white folks, white cops aren't going to get in trouble by the things that they do as far as brutality, the fact that all this is going to, it still should be in the back of their mind. Even if this white cop is not going to get in trouble and get money and all that, he should be thinking in his head, if I don't let up, like I'm trying to subdue this guy, but if I kill this guy, and obviously this crowd is filming me, filming me, if I kill this guy, how many towns and how many things could potentially get destroyed? You know what I'm saying? Because of what I'm doing. Yeah, so even if they don't, if they have any type of empathy, if they have any type of heart, even if nothing happens to them, like Derek Chauvin, he gotta feel like a fucking asshole because he did what he did. Now the whole world is rioting right now. I, I used to always think whoever invented COVID-19 is a fucking asshole. All the people that died, that's fucking horrible. But Derek Chauvin should feel like a fucking shit bag. That him not being able to control his anger and his emotions in that moment and just show like human compassion and decency, all this unrest and people losing businesses and it's insane, man. You gotta be a heartless motherfucker to not care in that situation, man. So hopefully people are starting to, starting to be more cognizant and conscious of that. It goes back to what I said earlier, man. When you're a 19 year old kid, you know, you want to, you're making certain decisions in life. You can't really see that far ahead, you know, because you don't know a lot of people in your circle going through it, going, who've had, who've done the bad or whatever it is that you're about to do that fucking alter their life for like 20 or 30 years. You don't see that shit. But now we got enough information. There's enough awareness. There's enough social media. Like that cop doesn't have that excuse, excuse anymore. Because he can clearly see, in cops in general, who want to fucking abuse their authority. You can clearly see that people are tired of it, tired of this shit, man. And usually, when a cop detains somebody, there's usually, and, and there's a lot of spectators. Spectators, there's usually a lot more spectators than there are cops. And you literally put you put your lives at risk every day anyway. But motherfuckers gonna get tired of it. Random bricks gonna start flying. Like, I, you know, I'm not gonna put no negativity out there, but. Eventually, you can only poke at, you can only poke at, even if it's a rabbit, a rabbit is considered a weaker a weaker creature. You can only poke at a rabbit, you know what I'm saying, before he bite the shit out of you with his, with his big ass buck teeth and scratch you with his claws. Yes, it might not be as dangerous as a lion, but it can still fuck you up and a rabbit might have rabies too. So, <sighs> that's pretty much all, man. I had to hold it down for Dolo today, you know, um, you know, my apologies. Uh, for a way for the way to start it out and um uh uh the next podcast will be this coming wednesday um if you're protesting or if you're rioting i don't judge anybody for what you do i just say just be smart and be as safe as you possibly can and yes we're doing this rioting thing but like you folks with kids and stuff like that you gotta start teaching your kids to be inside the system to expose the system and we have to start we have to start funding our soldiers and our heroes. We have to start doing that. If we really, if we really want to, you really show that you want to change by what you spend. 
That's some real shit. With that being said, I'm about to put this. Oh shit! Hold on. Oh shit, isn't it? Yeah, my computer sucks. I know this. With that being said, let me um play la musica. What the hell? Holla at y'all, man. Y'all be safe. What you doing? Adjust the levels. Adjust the levels. Yeah, yeah. Clearwater Productions. Mm -hmm. A track on the tracks. The tracks. The keys on the boards. Big ups to my man O. Help me get this in together. It's Mo Q. You know what I'm saying? ATL. Connecticut. Connected. Bring you something different for the old level. You know what I mean? About to hit you with something official. And it's like this. Yo, yo, what could I do? Or would I do? Convince you, girl, that I'm into you. You got like three gigs, minus kids. Still looking fresh with the flyest crib. I'm high as shit. When I'm in the mix, caramel complex is sweet like Twitch shit. I might have to rewrite this. A million words couldn't describe this. Vibe she giving, but I'ma try to finish. Spit my words till my energy diminish. When she come around, I can get me through replenish. Keep me on point, she the real need to send it. Beginning to the end it. I'ma keep it real. Always real, never conceal. Whatever she desire, I'ma try to get it. If she committed, we gon' live it. How can I show you that I wanna hold you? Till the end of the world, I would go to just to reach you. Cause you're worth it. All oh, my love you deserve. How can I show you, you that I wanna hold you, you? Till the end of the world, I would go to you just to reach you. you. Cause you're worth it. All oh, my love you deserve. Hey, let's make a date, date be at the doorstep, half past eight, eight, wear the dress that caress your waist, match your necklace, it has me breathless, city steam for some comedy, spit to the rust for some poetry, hip tie same for the martinis, so much to do with my boo and the beat, black eyes style, we can buy the jazz, drinks on me, don't bring no cash, you don't have to ask, you deserve, it's all for you, you are worth it. How much worth it? Let me describe your diamond raindrops from the sky And my arms are open I'ma catch you precious, beautiful, luscious, special You're the one, only one Baby, I can't even front Never be a number two You for me, me for you I'm the one you should see We can make a unity All oh, my love you deserve you're the one, only one, baby, I can't even front, never be a number two, you for me, me for you, I'm the one, you should see, we can make a unity, all oh, my love you deserve, how can I show you, that I wanna hold you, till the end of the world I would go to, just to reach you, cause you're worth it. All oh, my love you deserve I'm here to show you And I wanna hold you Till the end of the world I would go to you Just to reach you Cause you're worth it All oh, my love you deserve I'm here to show you And I wanna hold you Till the end of the world I would go to you Just to reach you Cause you're worth it Cause you're worth it All oh, my love you deserve How can I show you, you That I wanna hold you, you Till the end of the world I would go to you Just to reach you, you Cause you're worth it All oh, my love you deserve How can I show you That I wanna hold you, you Till the end of the world I would go to you Just to reach you, you Cause you're worth it All oh, my love you deserve Hey, let's make a date, 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 yeah.
day, let's make a date, let's make a date, let's make a date, let's make a date, let's make a date. I'll be at your doorstep half past eight.